Hi, my name is Richard Johnson. I'm the founder and CEO of Texture Capital. We're a digital securities broker dealer and ATS for secondary trading. Uh, you can find us at texture.capital. That's great. Um, tell me, how did your background in market structure and equities shape your understanding and approach to blockchain technology? Uh, interesting. So yeah, I spent 14 years in uh, electronic trading um, on Wall Street, starting from the early days when there was very little activity until now, of course, everything's traded electronically on Wall Street. Um, and um, on the one hand, I think there's some similarities there. I like very much say an entrepreneurial space. We were growing something new from scratch. Um, but then I got into, you know, so that's one aspect of it. But then I got into blockchain and I really, you know, obviously Bitcoin first. I really felt that it was, you know, obviously revolutionary technology. Um, and fundamentally, I believe what blockchain is about is about transfer of value. And I think a lot of what capital markets is about is about transfer of value, uh, whether it's economic value or even transfer of risk and things like that. So it's really a natural fit for financial markets, um, which is why I set up Texture Capital to be focused on leveraging blockchain to put securities or real world assets on chain to leverage the benefits of you know, transparency, you know, single source of truth, reducing the need for reconciliation between many different banks, uh, you know, faster settlements, you know, we'd have atomic settlement versus stable coins for securities transactions on chain, um, you know, leveraging smart contracts for programmatic compliance and other automation and all these, all these types of things. Uh, in your opinion, how has the perception and adoption of blockchain and crypto evolved since you started focusing on these technologies? Yeah, well, it's been a roller coaster. We all know that in many, in many different directions. So. Yeah, you know, I got into space around 2014, 2015. It was really just Bitcoin there. Um, you know, Ethereum came along after that. So that was one evolution, bringing in smart contracts. Um, you know, we, we, you know, we moved to kind of the proof of stake type, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, settlement process, uh, uh, confirmation process, which enables faster throughput. So that was a great thing. We had the ICO boom, which is kind of where I got the idea for Texture, because what a lot of all of these ICOs were, were really like startup companies raising early stage capital, which are kind of security. So that's kind of was my entry point into the space. Uh, we then evolved into DeFi. That was the next big wave, I think. And um, that's very relevant for what we're doing. We love everything going on in DeFi. And part of our mission is to bring all that innovation from DeFi into the regulated world so we can, we can bring all these other types of assets and leverage a lot of the benefits of DeFi, like you know, lending and, and, and stable coins and so forth. And then after that wave, um, I may be missing a couple here, uh, we hit kind of the NFT boom, much less relevant to what we're doing, frankly. Um, and then now I think we're in the RWA tokenization space. That is what's booming. There have been people experimenting, Franklin Mutual, so Franklin Templeton, um, Wisdom Tree, uh, and others have also tokenized funds. And then the big kahuna, Larry Fink, BlackRock, the big world's largest asset manager, just re very recently launched their own tokenized fund on Ethereum. So this is uh, this is the current big wave, in my opinion, that is, is tokenization of the wave. What role do you see for digital assets in blockchain, the future of traditional finance alternatives and Web3? Uh, significant role. Like I said, that's our, that's, that's our focus. Um, we see getting many different asset classes on. You know, my company is you know, asset class agnostic, so we're more trying to provide the infrastructure to enable these RWA to come on chain. But I think we're going to, we're definitely going to see a lot of real estate. We're obviously already seeing tokenized money market funds. Um, we're going to see structured credits, and we're going to see a lot of other, you know, somewhat esoteric asset classes being able to kind of, you know, you know, become accessible to a wider audience through the use of blockchain. So give me your extensive experience of trading and brokerage operations. How do you see the role of technology evolving in those areas? Um, the blockchain technology you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we want to adopt it. I think, you know, you know, you know it's about digitization, tokenization of assets. Um, so like I said, we're putting securities on chain. Um, there's, this, I think there's an analysis by one of these people I mentioned before, Franklin Templeton, that they've reduced their back office operation costs significantly by you know, using the tokenized process. I think what we're not going to see, is what they're I'm just kind of, uh, you know, what a lot of people were experimenting was just using blockchain for post trade. That doesn't work. You've got to have the asset digitized and tokenized on chain. 
Can you share your perspectives on the most significant developments in the blockchain space over the last over the past year? Yeah, I mean, I think I just touched on it. Like, um, you know, going backwards from here, so the, 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 the Black Box Biddle token, um, I think, is a huge game changer. There's a paradigm shift. Uh, like I said, it's the world's largest asset manager. And I think that's going to spur a lot of other companies to really take note, start, you know, you know, figuring out their own tokenization strategy. Larry Fig has said that. Um, you know, tokenization is the next, uh, uh, is the, the future, let me get this right, the future of markets is tokenization securities, is what he said. Uh, and I believe mm. that. So that, that's that been a huge change. And, um, you know, before that, the BlackRock ETFs, uh, sorry, the Bitcoin ETFs, um, finally getting those approval, you know, eight years later, was a huge step as well. And now we're just hearing that, you know, the Ethereum ETFs are likely going to get approved as well. So these are all big steps towards broader financial adoption of blockchain and crypto assets. Um, what do you see as the biggest challenges facing the adoption of blockchain technology and how, how can the industry overcome that? Um, yeah, that's an interesting question. I think the you know a lot of people are going to say when you ask that question there are going to be regulatory challenges and certainly there are. Um, and you know, but I think we're resolving them. For example, custody is is you know is, it, is it something we need to think about in a different way from a regulatory point of view. A lot of the custody rules were written, you know, prior to 1970, prior to the internet, even, where custody meant, oh, I'm taking a stock certificate and I'm putting in this big vault underneath the bank or something like that. So moving into a world where you've got a custody securities that are, uh, you know, not only digital in nature but also potentially on a decentralized network uh, is a new concept that people need to understand. But there are solutions. Um, there's been an education process with the regulators. I think we're making progress. We saw the FCI bill um, passed by the House at least uh, in the last couple of weeks. Um, so that's, that's one aspect. I think we're, we're getting a lot more clarity there. And then I think we need to have um, you know, more real, real world examples of real world assets coming on chain. We need to move beyond the POC. We've done the, we've done the POCs. Now we need to get to the next stage. Um, how do you envision the future of Web3 and what impact do you think it will have on the internet as we know it? Well, um, you know, it's already had a big impact. Certainly, I think the most, the most successful use case right now is stable coins. I think that's going to be, um, you know, pervasive. Payments right now is, it's just, stable coins are just such a better product than traditional payment rails. If you've ever, if you've ever tried sending a wire internationally, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, uh, so what's the question? How do you think it'll evolve? Yeah, how do you think it will evolve and uh, uh, on, and have an impact on the internet as we know it? Oh yeah, the broader question around the internet. So yeah, it does, it's not just finance, of course. I've been talking about you know, financial products on chain. Um, there's business models that we want. We want to see some decentralized business models coming up. You know, the Web 2 era you know, ushered in some great innovation, but the stack is basically controlled by Google, you know, you know, uh, you know, Amazon, uh, Netflix, and so forth. So there's potentially some decentralized models around that. There's Filecoin trying out decentralized storage. I think you see some other types of business models, never decentralization. Um, you're know, connecting two sides of a market in a decentralized way, as opposed to having a centralized entity owning both sides of the market. And part of that is about you know, sharing economics using you know using using security tokens or revenue type agreements. Part of it's going to be using governance tokens and DAOs to manage this decentralized entity. Part of it's going to be using NFTs for you know, customer engagement. Um, so you know, I think there's a there's a, a ton of potential. Um, you know. But I think there's a long way to go for um, What advice would you give to new entrepreneurs entering the blockchain and crypto space today? Uh, plan well, I would say. Um, I think, you know, there's a lot of great ideas out there. Um, and there's a lot of great ideas that don't get funded. So really do the groundwork. You know, capital is what you need to survive as a startup. Um, so, you know, think about that before, you know, you know, think about how you're going to raise money as much as you think about what product you're going to build. Right start, start building those networks 